Hello student, welcome to the KTHM e-learning portal. I am Pratik Shinde, working as an assistant professor in Department of Zoology, KTHM College Nasi. In this lecture, we are going to study the chapter Sericulture. And in this lecture, we are going to cover the topic Introduction to Sericulture. Let's start with Introduction to Sericulture. The image shows that some life stages of silkworm and these are the larva cocoon and last one is adult moth the larval stage are horaceous feeder on the plant leaves that is the mulberry plants which act as a important part of its life here the white color web of threads like structure called cocoon the larva made the cocoon by continuous secretion of silk thread through the silk gland and wrap it around their body. When this silk thread get contact with air, it become hard. In the cocoon, the pupal stage is seen. The cocoon is inactive stage of silkworm life. Then we see here the adult stage of silkworm which is flightless and the main function of the adult silk moth is fertilization and eggling. This is the overview of life stages of silkworm that is adult, larva, the cocoon and mulberry leaves. It is a food of silkworm. And the detailed life cycle we will see in next lecture. Then let's look at what is sericulture. The word sericulture is derived from the Greek word sericos. Here seri means silk and kos means culture. The sericulture or silk farming is the rearing of silkworm for the production of raw silk. In other words, the sericulture is an rearing and management of silkworm for the production of raw silk for the economic purpose. Silk is used in all the textile industries to manufacture the many type of silk cloth and those are pure silk which are too attractive and expensive also. To manufacture those cloths there are lots of demand of raw silk. That's why the silk also known as queen of textile. Silk is secreted by silk gland of the silkworm and it is fibrous protein of the insect origin. The main composition of the silk is protein. There are two types of proteins namely fibronin and sericin. The fibronin contribute 80% and sericin contribute 20%. Then we move towards the moriculture. Let's look at what is moriculture. Why it is important in sericulture? Because the mulberry leaves is main food of Bombex mode. That's why the cultivation of mulberry plant is necessary. The scientific definition of moriculture is the cultivation and harvesting of mulberry plant is called as moriculture. The mulberry plant is commonly called tutu in Marathi. When we study sericulture, the history of it is also important. See here, in an ancient time, the collect of cocoons directly from the forest because the rearing equipment and technique are not evolved well. Then the collected cocoon are sorted by grade wise. Best cocoon are destroyed. The best quality cocoon are boiled in the hot water which help to separate the silk thread. Here after the separation of silk thread it should be collected uniformly. That technique called as reeling of silk. Then we see the discovery of silk. The discovery of silk 
first invented in China by a Chinese ancient queen Zhai Ling Shi, wife of Emperor Hong Di before 3000 BC. Once upon a time, she was drinking tea under the mulberry tree when a silk cocoon fell into her tea, and the hot tea released their long thread of silk. As she picked up it out and started to wrap the silk thread around her finger, she slowly felt a warm sensation of it. When the silk ran out, she saw a small larva, in present day we call pupa, and she realized that this caterpillar larva was the source of silk. She taught this to the people, and it became widespread. But that was keep a closely guarded secret for the centuries, and leakage of the secret was punishable by death, because due to this the silk was sold by the Chinese weight for weight in gold. Along with the China, India is also large silk producing country. We also know that the sericulture industry in India. The Aryans discovered the silk worm in sub Himalayan region. After that, the wasp spread in the south region of India. In Karnataka, silk worm rearing introduced by Tipu Sultan of Mysore. And now Karnataka produces 70% of the country's raw silk. Presently, China, India, Japan, South Korea, and Brazil are the main leading silk producing. countries nowadays china on the first position in the world for raw silk production and account for 53432 metric tons and india is on second position in the world for raw silk production and accounting for 14305 metric tons india has many silk producing centers in assam bengal chennai mysore karnataka and jammu kashmir indian government also take initiative in sericulture and establish some centers and research center are as follow first one is the central sericulture research and training institute bharanpur west bengal was established in 1943 central silk board bangalore was established in 1948 central sericulture research and training institute mysore was established in 1961 there are many different type of silk moth found around the world but few are used to rearing and produce raw silk for the commercial purpose here we study the different type of silk moth which are commonly used see here this is bombex mori silk moth commonly called mulberry silk moth it is creamy white in color and its larva feed on mulberry leaves it is completely domesticated is commonly rare in india china and many parts of the world for the commercial purpose the silk produced by the bombex mori is white or creamy white in color in india about 90% of the raw silk is obtained from bombex mori see here this is somia santhia ricini silk moth commonly called as iri silk moth it have brown color wing with purple strips the larva of iri silk moth is polyphagous mainly feed on castor plant in india iri silk worm is commonly rare in north eastern state of the india the silk produced by iri silk worm is white and brick red in color see here this is Antherina asama silk moth commonly called as muga silk moth the muga silk moth have yellowish to brown in color the larva of muga silk moth 
polyphagus feed on soma and solu plants it is semi domesticated means found in wild in india muga silkworm is commonly rare in assam the silk produced by the muga silkworm is golden yellow in color see here these two are tassar silk moth first is antherina mylita commonly called indian tassar silk moth commonly rare in india the larva of indian silk moth feed on arjun plant second is antheria perinai commonly known as chinese oak tassar silk moth commonly rare in china the larva of chinese oak tassar silk moth polyphagus mainly feed on oak plant silk is prepared by species belong to the family bombycidae and saturnidae bombex mori is well known silkworm belong to the family bombycidae while iri tassar and muga moth belong to the family saturnidae among the species of silkworm bombex mori is most widely used the iri silk moth was one of the wild species but in nowadays completely domesticated let's look at taxonomic position of silk moth the silk moth are classified are as follow the silk moth are belong from the phylum arthropoda the characteristics of arthropoda is jointed appendages then it is belong from sub phylum mandibulata it's mean that they possess mandibulate type of mouth part then class insecta insecta that is the body of organism is divided into head thorax and abdomen then the sub class pterygota here pterygota means wing insect or the insect which possess wings then the division division endopterygota this is the character of complete type of metamorphosis or the complete life cycle here showing by insect that is the larva have four different life stages such as egg larva pupa and adult and the wings are developed during pupal stage they are belong from the order lepidoptera due to the presence of scale on their body the silk moth are majorly belong from the two families first one is bombycidae and second one is saturnidae the bombex mori belong to the family bombycidae genus bombex and species mori the bombex mori commonly known as mulberry silk moth then samia cynthia is belong to the family saturnidae genus samia species cynthia and subspecies ricini is commonly called as iri silk moth then the antheria mylita is belong to the family saturnidae genus antheria species mylita antheria mylita commonly known as indian tassar silk moth then antheria assama also belong to the family saturnidae genus antheria species assama is commonly known as muga silk moth thank you